Today, I've had a lot of people ask me about stripping paint off of factory cars so they can repaint them. What's the easiest way to do it? And I'm going to show you in a brief video of how I've always done it. These are some of the cars that I've painted over the years. They all started as, you know, factory Carrera cars similar to this one. There's Aston Martin, and lastly, Ferrari 599. So, <clears throat> let's get those out of the way. Here's my donor car, and if you remember or saw my video from the other day, I'm going to attempt to make, now all you purists out there give me a little break here, but I'm going to attempt to make my version of a dirt modified or the like. So, as I said in the past video, we were racing down at Sensi Slots, and this is a car that I had stripped already, painted up with our green sales, Ford Parts logo, and Sensi Slots. And he's been beat and battered, and the other night we got into a collision and my hood went flying off, so the glue no longer held. So, Chucked it aside, started running around like this, and I thought, ah, that'd be kind of cool, make this a dirt modified car, and see what happens. So my plan is to, you know, trim off these tabs, put some styrene in here, fill in the, the hood, get some sort of, uh, this is a Dremel pad, but something similar, give it that, you know, some sort of a air cleaner look to it. So, with that being said, put that aside, and this is going to be my donor car, Ford Capri 124 Carrera, and so you just pop it open. Just take the four screws out, nothing big. Some people call and they ask some questions about, you know, inside the car, like if they take these four screws out, it's going to explode or something. It's fine. Take it apart, learn, figure it out. It's easy. The, uh, the main thing that you want to pay attention to when you take these apart, though, is the orientation of this, because you can flip this front axle holder and change the ride height of the front. Um, I've yet to understand why you would want to change that but I've always left it in the stock position. Same with this rear axle holder. It can go one of two ways. Make sure you get it back in the right way. Um, if you put it in upside down, uh, you'll definitely know. So, we can put this aside because we don't need it. So now, these are the tools you're gonna need to get this job done. It's easiest if you have a Dremel. You can use other stuff, but a Dremel is going to make quick work of what you have to do. You need a couple jugs of the 91% isopropyl alcohol. You can get it at any drug store. It's not hard to buy. Um, 89, 90%, it'll all work. It's just I've had best luck with the 91. You need a tray. Uh, this is a 132nd Carrera um, lid that I'm going to use. To soak the body in. At least that's my plan. Looks like it'll fit, so we're good there. So, and then on your Dremel, it's nice to have a couple extra uh, types, different types of cutting shafts, tools, whatever. Um, so I'm gonna pop this off. I'm not gonna go through the whole disassemble, uh, disassembling of the car just for video's sake. Be kind of bored for you guys to watch me take this whole thing apart. And I forgot, an old toothbrush is really all you need. You might need maybe like an SOS pad, maybe. Um, it's only been a few times that I've taken a car apart to paint 
and the tampo painting doesn't want to come off so you might have to do a little extra rubbing but most of the time it just pretty much wipes right off um, I recommend soaking them overnight um, <clears throat> I have had instances where um, I came back say an hour or two later and it had already you know loosened up take my paintbrush or toothbrush whichever you want to use and start brushing it away and then when you're done brushing as much as you can and all the paints pretty much gone uh, you definitely want to make sure you get all the paint off um, again you may have to soak it a little longer um, when you're done there I usually wash the body with uh, like Dawn dish soap or some sort of dish soap rinse it real good so you get you know all of your alcohol off of the body otherwise it could cause problems when you go to paint it uh, let it dry real well and use a primer and let it rip start painting so when you get to the body there's a lot of you'll see all these hot melts where they went where they were in the factory and you know they put the tail lights in and the the um, the chest or the interior tray. So if I put some glasses on so I can see, I'll start with just the trap, the uh, interior tray. So there's little. Interior melts, there's four of them on this one. Or not. So there I've taken the four, you can kind of see them with the way the glare is. And we'll just pop this baby out. Sometimes you don't get all of it, so you have to go back and grind again. But I got lucky. Strange. Well, I just got wearing a pink shirt. That doesn't match anything. Well, anyhow, you can uh, fix that by taking these three melts out actually these just these two you can hit these two pull this guy out I mean it's how it looks pretty cool but we gotta get rid of that pink shirt not against pink but for a race car I don't know, it's a f so set that aside and you got to do the same thing for the windshield and all the windows. Um, it looks like on this one you would just have to take and grind down this little window tab here. Same on this side, little window tab. But on the windshield and back glass it also has four melts holding it in in there. So if you take your said I'm going to show you the whole thing but it feels like I am but I'm not. Alright. So let me just pop this off the little mountain post here somehow. Pull 
that. Now, I've only done it one time, but you can soak this in the in the alcohol as well to get rid of this stuff. I normally, myself, just leave it because I like how it has the trim already painted and a logo up top and you know this one's painted as well. Um, I would never get it that crisp so unless it's something specific um, I typically just leave all that the way it is. So you can put him aside. So now you're you're to the point where you have pretty much the whole interior out. I still have to get these windows um, the other thing you want to do is get, you know, your headlights out. Um, I separate the hood from the car for the simple fact that if you want to paint your hood a little bit different than the body or um, add different graphics like they have here, it's probably going to be easier for me to do that with the hood separated from the body so it's just easier to get the tape around and and tape off whatever it is I want to paint. So, just for speed of the internet purposes, once you have your car stripped and down to bare plastic, like this little Corvette here, that's basically what you're going to be left with. Just a shell. Nothing else. So you want to make sure you get all the glass out, you want to get all the mirrors off, all the bumpers off, um, any anything that you can remove before you dip it, I would suggest doing so. On um, the one that I did here, <coughs> I took, you can see the exhaust on the side, I took it off just so it was still, you know, nicely painted. Because I thought it was going to look a heck of a lot cooler the way Carrera did it than me trying to make it look nice. I'll admit it, I'm not that great at doing that, but um, yeah. So you get everything, and then you take this to the kitchen sink, wash it off with Dawn, some sort of dish soap, let it dry. You can take it down to your workspace and blow it out but I'd still make sure it's nice and dry. And then you can set it up on, I have some of those um, Tamiya um, model stands that rotates and holds the body and all that. So you just clip it on there, do some light coats of primer, maybe two or three light coats. Um, let those sit and then go on to uh, putting the base coat on. So with this one, it was pretty simple. I just primered it in white. And I've always used testers or Tamiya, Tamiya, potato, potato. And have always had you know great success. I've since started using uh, Krylon that you get at Walmart. Um, you know. For these big cars, especially if you're going to be racing them, they're going to get just beat up and smashed up. So I wouldn't recommend doing um, going after it too hard because chances are you're going to be cringing every time somebody smacks into you. So expect that. I mean, if you look at this body, this was one that we won with our Turkey Day race and I've touched it up so many times. Um, actually looking at it on the camera, actually it doesn't look too bad, but it's rough. It's been beat up. Um, so if you're doing it as you know a shelf queen or display piece, which we have some. This is one that I've stripped and painted years ago that I've never raced, but I did the same thing. 
the Falcon tire part, I could have probably stripped that off and made it look better, but a little late now. And those are Scale Auto aluminum wheels with Scale Auto inserts and um, Slot Car Factory over in Germany. Uh, they sell rear end kits for these. Um, they're kind of expensive, but uh, we were spending, you know, six to eight hours truing tires. And when you put these on, you get the same effect in about 15 minutes. So it's worth the money. I don't know that I would do it, excuse me, for all of my cars, but um, yeah, it was, it was worth doing just because it just, you know, made the, made the truing process non-existent. And there's another, I just noticed, I'll share this while we're at it. There's another place over in Germany that sells front uh, air splitters for the 911s. You can see it just screws on the bottom. This is what the stock looks like. And there it is with the little splitter put on it. Doesn't really do anything other than, you know, it does. Looks kind of cool having the extra on there. Plus, if anyone out there has ever had one of these 911s, your front teeth are surely being kicked out. Where this may give you a little bit of protection on there. So, all right, so that's what it looks like when you paint and strip. And this one, you know, you can see it was pretty simple, painted orange, touch up the rear wing. Oh shoot, you know what, I forgot. They also do rear air diffusers, which are pretty cool as well, you can see that. gives you like this exhaust is loose because that's the first thing that happens when you get hit in the butt is that exhaust gets cracked off the, the posts so all right I think that's pretty much it for now um, so what I'll do is I will continue disassembling this and then, you know, I'll dump my parts that I want to get stripped into here, pour this over top, and let it soak for, you know, a couple of days, a um, couple of hours, it just depends. Um, but I'll probably come back tomorrow morning and take my toothbrush that I no longer use, that's important, don't use it anymore and just start peeling this stuff back and then you can reuse this several times and it'll still work um, i would however recommend maybe using a strainer over uh, a funnel to fill this back up with because if you don't um, all of this stuff that you scratch, or scratch, scratch off and strip off, it's going to end up back in the bottle because, you know, you're just going to pour it all back in through a funnel. So it's not a problem, but the cleaner it gets back in, just the better it is overall for you. So keep that in mind. But you can use it several times. Um, I will probably need... I'm guessing around bottle and a half, two bottles of this to fill this to where where he will uh, be totally submerged. So that fits perfect in there. So you just got to fill it up high enough that it's all under the uh, alcohol, <clears throat> and that's it. Um, if you like the video, subscribe, like. If you have any questions, post them below. 
and I will get back to you as fast as I can. Um, trying to think what our, oh, our next video is going to be um, probably just a bunch of custom paint jobs and custom cars that people have done or done for me um, or cars that I've done so um, yeah stay tuned hopefully uh, we'll do one of these live and I can talk to you guys as I'm doing it um, yeah peace uh, you know